we have been discussing about the structure of cilia and flagella in the previous videos have you ever thought about how a flagella actually moves the organism or how a cilia is able to beat in a coordinated fashion that it helps the paramecium to eat food in this video we will not only be learning about the flagellar and ciliary movement but also compare and contrast between them the eukaryotic cilia and flagella are called by the term undulipodia this is to mainly differentiate them from their prokaryotic counterparts the term was used by the american invertebrate zoologist libby heim these structures help them organism to move in water as well as in body fluids the locomotion is enabled by the bending movement of the cilia or flagella so let's say we have an axon in this way they are able to bend in this manner from one side to the other side and back to their original position but to understand this bending movement we need to look within the axoneme we know that the axoneme consists of microtubule doublets right and there is a protein attached to it which is called as the dynein and it is a motor protein which moves along the microtubule this movement is atp driven which means the dynein moving along the microtubule is fired by the energy from atp The dynein arm is the site of ATPase activity meaning when ATP binds to the dynein arm uh, it splits phosphate releases energy and forms ADP the adjacent microtubule doublets are attached to each other by the dynein arms when one of the microtubule wants to move ahead it pulls at the other arm and the microtubules actually slide past each other in the opposite direction when the arm reaches a certain limit uh, some of the dynein's release and reattach and then continue to pull but we know that the microtubule doublets are not free they are attached to a structure called as the basal plate the doublets are also connected to each other by nexin protein which actually limits how much the microtubule can slide past each other so now let's say when one microtubule wants to move ahead the microtubules curve and this causes the overall bending of the flagella the bending movement plays a very important role in flagellar and ciliary locomotion but the doublets are not all engaged simultaneously and depending upon the direction of the bend a section of the axoneme is engaged while the rest are free So in our original axoneme the correct way to represent the bending movement would be like this so let's say they want to move towards the left you would notice that a section of the axoneme is taller so that is because they have been activated and the others remain the same height because they are deactivated the same thing happens when it has to bend in the opposite direction radial spokes regulate the dyne they cause the dynein's at the activated end to slide forcefully whereas the deactivated side does not slide so the regulation of the radial spoke along with the nexin is what causes the bending and bending leads to undulation undulation is the fundamental principle that is behind the locomotion in organisms that have flagella and cilia It is said to be a wave-like movement that is seen in these appendages. And when we say wave-like, the direction of the wave is very important. The direction of the wave is going to help us determine how and where the organism is going to move. Undulation can be seen as two different types. In the first type, the wave movement is from the base of the flagella to the tip of the flagella. So this is similar to cracking a whip. When the wave starts at the base, it creates a pushing force which is actually pushing at the cell. And this causes the organism to be pushed in the forward direction. In the next case, the wave is going to be moving from the tip to the base. This creates a pulling force that is directed towards the cell. and this also causes the organism to move forward but here rather than being pushed it feels like the organism is being pulled forward undulation can also help in changing the direction of movement so let's say an organism is moving in this direction initially okay so now the flagella is going to bend in one direction 
and let's imagine the waveform is going to be traveling from the base to the tip again corresponding to this change in the flagellar movement the cell also uh, changes position laterally and it starts moving in the direction that is opposite to that of the flagellar position undulations in flagella can be categorized into two varieties first is called as the sidewise lash movement it is considered to be a planar form of undulation meaning it is going to happen in just one plane x and y you can imagine that way this particular plane is going to be parallel to that of the organism's body surface the wave is not propagated along the entire length of the flagellum but it happens in small bits and pieces throughout the length it consists of two types of stroke one is called as the effective or propulsive stroke and the other is called as the recovery stroke the forceful movement is going to happen in the effective stroke in the effective or propulsive stroke let's say we have an organism that is moving in this particular direction so this is the regular undulatory movement of the flagella right now before the effective stroke starts you notice that the flagellum it starts becoming rigid and it starts bending to one side beating against the water the water is pushed at a right angle to the axis of the body and the organism moves forward so here the direction of the cell movement is parallel to the body surface so to continue the movement it has to go on to the next stroke which is the recovery stroke here the flagella becomes soft and it doesn't create a resistance with water this is so that it can move to its original position the second type of undulating movement is called as a simple conical gyration movement this is considered to be a 3d form of undulation meaning the uh, flagella can move left right as well as top and bottom almost in a circular manner the flagella beats in a spiral corkscrew pattern and through this movement it exerts a pulling force on the organism and the organism starts moving forward during the gyration movement of the flagella two things can be noticed first is that the flagella spins fast around its own central axis this is the primary movement causing the locomotion of the organism the second is that the organism itself is going to spin on its own axis while it is moving forward in a straight line Next let's look at the ciliary movement this is the wave like movement of cilia which is seen in ciliates the movement is very similar to that of flagella the back and forth movement but what is different is how the water moves here the water moves as if it is being paddled or moved with the oars of a boat it's also called as a pendular movement and the movement of water here is perpendicular to the axis of the cilia here too it occurs in two phases or two strokes one called as the effective stroke and the other called as the recovery stroke first let's look at uh, effective stroke so this is the surface of the organism and you have multiple cilia on top like this let's focus on just one cilia for now so what happens is that the cilia bends backward and it starts beating against the water the direction of stroke is in this particular way and as cilia pushes the water backwards it is going to move in the opposite direction think about how we swim in a swimming pool so we push the water with our arms in the backward direction and that propels us towards the front the same thing is happening over here as well the cilia here is said to move like a pendulum or a paddle similar to flagella in order to continue this movement the effective stroke has to move into the recovery stroke so here the cilia comes back to its original position by backward movement so this happens without any resistance to water then this is what the pendular movement looks like although ciliary movement is very similar to the sidewise lash movement of the flagellum the way the water is pushed around and the purpose of these movements vary unlike flagella cilia is not a single structure there are millions of cilia that act in a coordinated fashion right so based upon how these multiple cilia move 
There are two categories of coordinated ciliary movement. In the first type, the cilia is in a transverse row and all of them beat simultaneously and they are going towards the same direction as well. It looks something like this. You can see that all of the cilia at a given point of time are in the same position, right? This sort of movement is called as the synchronous movement. The second type of coordinated ciliary movement is how the cilia in a longitudinal row are going to beat. This is a sequential movement. The uh, cilia are all going to move in the same direction, almost like a wave. In the video about cilia, we learned that the coordinated ciliary movement is because of a structure called as infraciliary system. This system is connected to the motorium, which is a neuromotor center that is situated near cytopharynx in paramecium. The motorium controls the infraciliary system and in turn controls how the cilia move in coordination. So, I have tried my best to represent how this movement is going to look like. This is the cell surface. So, here you are going to see uh, rows of longitudinally arranged cilia. And when they start beating, you notice that no two adjacent cilia are in the same position. All of them are in different position. The reason for this is because after one row starts beating, and after a certain gap, the second row starts. Does this movement remind you of something else? I think it is similar to this movement that we see in a football stadium or in any sports stadium. This is called as a wave. And this sort of coordinated movement is called as a metachronous movement. Now that we have looked at flagellar and ciliary movement, let's compare them. Flagella is long like a whip whereas cilia are short and hair-like. Flagella could be few or many, but cilia is mostly always many. Flagella is usually found at the anterior end of the organism, but cilia is found all over its body. Flagella primarily helps in moving the organism, whereas cilia helps in moving the fluid that is around the organism. Flagella shows undular movement, whereas cilia shows pendular movement. Out of these two, which do you think moves faster, flagella or cilia? I'll give you a moment to think about it. It's actually cilia. Although flagella is longer, millions of cilia moving in quick motion creates faster movement. 